Right guys, so now we'll go ahead and implement the a priori algorithm in R. So this is R Studio, and to implement the a priori algorithm, we are first supposed to load the a rules package. So I'll type in library of a rules. And to visualize these association rules, we would also have to load the a rules OS package. So library of a rules OS. So this a rules package gives us a data set called as groceries. So let me load that. Now I'll have a glance at the summary of this data set. So summary of groceries. So this is what we get. So you see that these are transactions in the form of an item matrix. And there are 9,835 rows and 169 columns. Or in other words, there are 9,835 different transactions or orders and 169 different items. So we'll go ahead and find interesting relationships between these 169 different items. And to do that, we would have to load the a priori algorithm. So I'll type in a priori over here. So first I will give in the name of the data set, which will be groceries. And then I'll give in some parameters. So I'll type parameter over here. So I'll give in the values for support and confidence. So support. So the value which I give for support would be 0.002. And the value which I give for confidence would be, let's say, 0 0.5. So support basically tells us how significant is this rule in the entire scheme of things. So this value of 0 0.002 means 0.2% of all the orders have the consequent and the antecedent, right? So 0.2% of all the orders have both the antecedent and the consequent. And this confidence value of 0.5 means that out of all the antecedents, there need to be at least 50% of them, which would also have the consequent, right? So now I will store this in, let's say, rule 1. Now let me inspect these. Inspect of. I'll type head and let me have a glance at the first five rules. So head of rule 1 and I'll type in 5 over here. So guys, this is what we get. Let me print this again. Right? So these are the 5 rules which we get. And over here, we also have the support value, the confidence value and the left value. You see that if a person buys cereals, he is also likely to buy whole milk. If he buys jam, he's also likely to buy whole milk. So specialty cheese, other vegetables, rice, other vegetables and again if he buys rice, the consequent over here is milk. So these are the antecedents, these are the consequence, and these are the support value, confidence value, and left value. So again, let's understand the support value over here. This support value of 0.003 means that 0.3% of all the orders represent this LHS and RHS combination. And again, this confidence value of 0.64 means of the orders which contain cereals, 64% of them are likely to have whole milk. Okay. Similarly, again, the support value of 0 0.002 means that out of all the orders, 0.2% of them represent this LHS and RHS combination. And again, this confidence value of 0 0.54 means of the orders which contain jam, 54% of them would definitely contain whole milk. Okay. So antecedent, consequence, support value, confidence value, and the left value. So this left value basically tell us how significant is the consequent with respect to the antecedent. So we see that this is like all of these values are two times more significant, right? So now what I'll do is I'll sort them on the basis of left. Okay. So inspect head sort of rule one and I'll be sorting it on the basis of left over here and let's say again I do want to have a look at the first five rules so this time these are the left values so left over here is 7 5 5 5 and 5 and these are all the antecedents and these are all the consequence the support values and the confidence values over here to see that if the person buys butter and hard cheese he is also likely to buy webbed or sour cream Similarly, if a person buys beef, citrus fruit and other vegetables, he's also likely to buy root vegetables. 
again if a person buys beef tropical fruit and other vegetables he is likely to buy root vegetables all right so now again uh, so the support value of 0.002 means that 0.2% of all the orders represent this lhs and rhs combination and this confidence value of 0.51 means of the orders that contain butter and hard cheese 51% of them definitely contain whipped or sour cream okay now what we'll do is we'll actually plot these rules so i'll type in plot of rule 1 so guys this is what we get over here so let me zoom this first right so on the y axis we have confidence on the x axis we have support and uh, this heat map which you see so this is for the left so what you notice is these darker red dots are mostly occurring at low support values so these lifts let's say 7x times 6x times 5x times are usually prevalent when the rule itself is somewhat of an insignificant rule in overall scheme of things so now we'll go ahead and plot this in a different way so i'll give the method to be grouped over here and let's see what do we get right so this time this is what we get so these are all the items in the lhs group and these are all the items in the rhs group so over here the size of the bubble represents support and the color of the bubble represents left so what you notice is larger the bubble greater is the support and darker the bubble greater is the left so let's say we would uh, want to find a compromise between the support and the left then uh, this or this one would be an ideal value So let's see. So this is the rule over here. So the antecedent is rice, herbs, and four other items, and the consequent is root vegetables. So there is a proper compromise between support and left over here. Similarly, we can uh, also take let's see this value over here. So over here, this is rice, herbs, and twelve other items, and again the consequent over here again is root vegetables. Right. So this was one rule which we built. now we'll go ahead and change the parameters and get another set of rules so again let me build the a priori algorithm i'll give in the data set which is groceries over here i'll give in the parameters so uh, it'll be list again the support value which i'd be giving would be 0.002 and the confidence value which i give is 0.5 now coming to the antecedents i would want a minimum length of at least 5 okay so i'll say min len equals 5 and i will store this in rule 2 so let me inspect this so inspect of head I'll type in rule two, and I'd want to have a glance at the first four rules, right? So we see over here that the minimum length for all of these is five. So the empty set is also counted as one item. So one, two, three, four plus the empty set makes it five. Again, one, two, three, four plus one makes it five. Four plus one, five. Four plus one, five. So over here, the antecedents are tropical fruit, other vegetables, butter, and yogurt. and the consequent is whole milk over here again the antecedents are tropical fruit whole milk butter and yogurt and the consequent is other vegetables similarly for this the antecedents are other vegetables whole milk butter and yogurt and the consequent is tropical fruit and for these these are the support confidence and lift values so let's examine this so the support value is 0.002 and this means that there are 0.2% of all the orders which represent this lhs and rhs combination right and again a confidence value of 0.69 this means that out of all the orders which contain tropical fruit whole milk butter and yogurt 69% of them would definitely contain other vegetables now let me also plot these so plot of rule 2 and i will group them method equals grouped so this time this is what we get over here 
so LHS are the antecedents, RHS are the consequence and again size over here represents the support and color of the bubble represents the left. So it's the same thing. So larger the bubble, greater is the support, darker the color, greater is the left and we'd have to find a compromise between the support and the left. So these two seem to be the ideal values over here. The bubble size is also big and the color is also dark. So for this, it is uh, pip fruit plus citrus fruit and three other items and the consequent is root vegetables. And for this, it's butter plus citrus fruit and four other items and the consequent is tropical fruit again. Also, this seems to be good. So it's rolls or buns, other vegetables, two other items and the consequent is yogurt. Okay, now we'll build another rule. So it'll be a priori. Let me give in the name of the data set, which would be groceries. After this, I'll give in the parameter. I'll type list over here. And this time I'll change the values for support and confidence. So the support value which I'm giving is 0 0.007 and the confidence value which I'm giving would be 0 0.6. Okay. So this means that 0.7% of all the orders would have both the antecedents and the consequence. And this 0 0.6 value means that out of all the antecedents, at least 60% of them would definitely have the consequent. So I will store this in rule 3. Let me inspect this. Inspect of head. I will give in the rule which is rule 3. And again I would want to have a glance of the first 4 rules. So this is what we get over here. Right. So these are the antecedents and these are the consequence. And we see that for all four, the consequent is just milk. So if a person buys root vegetables and butter, he's also likely to buy whole milk. If a person buys butter and yogurt, he's also likely to buy whole milk. Similarly, if a person buys root vegetables, other vegetables and yogurt, he's also likely to buy whole milk. And these are the support and confidence values over here. So the support value for this one is 0 0.007 and the confidence value is 0 0.6. The support value of 0 0.007 means that 0.7% of all the orders represent this LHS and RHS combination. And this value of 0 0.6 means that of the orders which contain root vegetables, other vegetables and yogurt, 60% of them would definitely contain whole milk. Again, let me plot this plot of rule three. And again, the method would be grouped. Right, so this time we just have uh, four bubbles over here. So this seems to be our ideal value. So this is the darkest and the size of the bubble is also the highest. So over here, the antecedent is butter and yogurt and the consequent is whole milk. So if a person buys butter and yogurt, there is a very, very good likelihood that he'll also buy whole milk. Okay, guys, so this is how we can implement the a priori algorithm in R. And guys, this brings us to the end of the session. Thanks for attending and let's meet in the next class.